And today for our Lunch and Learn, we're glad that you joined us. We're going to be learning about helping kids make posters that pop. So everyone has to do project displays for their, their projects when they go to project judging. And so today we're going to learn some tips to help those kids make posters that really stand out. So what makes a good project poster or display? That poster needs to show what they learned. It should be well organized. It should be neat. And hopefully it is eye-catching and easy to read. But first of all, they need to know their project requirements because different projects require different things. So you should go to your county extension website. So that is whatever your county name is, .osu.edu. And you should look in your uh, 4-H non-livestock project information, or in some counties, they might call them miscellaneous projects or special interest projects and find your project requirements and then follow those project guidelines. So that is first the most important thing. There's a lot of projects that require a poster. And when I'm talking a poster, we're talking a maximum size of 14 by 22. So that's like when you buy a large sheet of poster board, half of that, a half sheet. And so there's some projects that specify that that is the project or the poster size it needs to be. So discovering 4-H, cake decorating, and growing communities. But there are some others that require an educational display. That could be a poster or it could be some sort of other display. It could be a display board. It could be a larger poster, or maybe it is something that you bring. So maybe if you're doing a gardening project or something like that, maybe you're bringing a display of the vegetables that you made. So it doesn't necessarily mean a poster, but today we're talking about posters. There's some projects that require some other type of exhibits. Some of them require a poster or display as well. But for example, if you're taking a rope project, you need to have a display board that shows all of the knots that you've learned in the project. Or maybe if you're taking woodworking, part of your project obviously includes the woodworking item that you have made. So again, just be, be careful to know what your project requirements are. Self-determined projects. And previously, when I was a 4-H advisor, I was an advisor in Adams County, and really those self-determined projects were the only ones that we wanted the big trifold displays at the fair, because quite frankly, in our fair booths where we were exhibiting the projects, we just didn't have room for a lot of those big trifold displays. It's important to note that sometimes you might have some special requirements for your county fair, so make sure that you're checking those requirements with your county 4-H educator. So let's talk a little bit about what you can do or ways that you can get around if you want to have a large display and maybe at your county fair you can't take a big uh, display board. And so what you could do is have a display board that you take, but also make a small poster. So this is an example for a hands to larger service project that one of the members when I was a 4-H advisor made. And she had a, a large display board, but then she also had a smaller poster that went along that was complementary to that, that she was able to put that in the fair booth. So let's talk more about some tips to make a good poster or display. So your poster should really only have one main thought or idea. If you try to cover everything that you learned in a 4-H project, there's no way that you can convey all of that and convey it well on a poster. So try to come up with one main thought or idea. And then you may need to make a list to help narrow down your points or figure out what specific things you want to share on your, on your project poster. Here's an example of a project that was a keeping fit project that my daughter did. And she did her whole, her whole poster was about stretching and warming up. Now there was a whole lot of other things she learned in that project, but her poster focused on that specific topic. And we'll talk a little bit more ab about it later, but you can see some of the ways that she made her poster really stand out and pop was by mounting her words on colored background. So she used like construction paper behind it to make that really jump off of the poster board and look really good. <clears throat> we'll talk more about that in a minute. So your, your title, 
that you that you call it. It could simply be the title of your project, or maybe you want to come up with something. And one example is is made by Jackie, who is one of the members in my 4-H club. And that was was hers. And we'll take another look closer at her pro, at her poster in a minute and see how she tied the theme of hand making something into her poster. But you want your title to be short and simple and attract attention. So you want to plan the arrangement of your poster to attract the interest of the viewer and provide a good balance. So that can be a formal balance where it's perfectly symmetrical, or it could be just a good balance that draws your eye from one place to the other on the poster. You want it to be simple and neat and clear, interesting. And obviously, since it's in 4-H, we want our posters to be in good taste. So we can influence the viewer's eye with the directions that the objects and the figures face. So the eye should lead in toward the center of the poster and around the display and not away from it. So if you have a picture that has people, you want their eyes or their focus to be going toward the middle of your display board and not necessarily off, you know, looking off at a distance off the side. There might be a sequence of information. And so you want your eye to move around in a logical order on the poster board. You want to direct the attention to specific objects on the display and something that can have a big influence on how your overall poster looks is having some blank white space, which is really important because if you had something on your poster that was just totally covered from top to bottom of your poster or display board, it really is distracting and looks cluttered and is hard to focus. And so it doesn't really convey your message all that well. So here's Jackie's poster again. She was nine years old when she made this, but she used stitches. If you can see there along the along the, the bottom edge, you can see it looks like stitches that she has going from one thing to another that she did in her poster for her Made By Me project to help draw the eye around it. You want to be attention getting. You want the information that is brief and easy to read. You want it to be neat because no one wants to look at messy posters. And so you want to keep your, your poster nice and neat. And if you can, include some pictures or charts or things that help um, explain what you're doing in your project and not just have a bunch of words on your poster. So this example of this slide would be an example of not what you would want because I made it with just all words. Would be much more interesting if you had some sort of visual. Here's an example of a great looking poster for uh, your first ho home away from home project. This was one that one of my daughters made. And again, you can see how it kind of draws your eye around. There's different topics that she covers and things to, to do for this when you're having your first home away from home. But looking at the way she did it, she used an Ohio State theme because she was going to be going to the Ohio State University. So she tied that in with her colors and some of the decor she used on the board. But then also just notice how she broke it up and there's some white space between uh, the different areas and it just makes for a, a nice cohesive looking display. Up next, we have another display that another one of my daughters made, and this was a favorite one that she did, um, and it was for the Drug and Alcohol Abuse Project. And she had Lift the Flap interactive questions on that. So it's hard to see, but each of those, the, the things that go down the sides, it asks a question, and then you could lift the flap or, or pull the flap to the side to read the answer. And she really liked this display. She uh, used a projector to project the images up on the wall and trace them. And then she used a, a metallic Sharpie to color in that skull thing that's in the middle. It just turned out really neat. So when you're making your display, you want to start out with a rough draft on plain paper. You want to print all of the text that you want to convey and roughly sketch out your, your, your graphics on that rough draft and figure out where would be the best placement for all of the things. Can't stress this enough. Check your spelling and grammar and then have them check it again. Kids are making posters and things. It's always good. That's why it's really important that they draw it out first so that that can all be checked before they put it on a display board with a permanent marker. Have someone else uh, check that over for them. Let's talk about fonts. So when you look at these, which one is the easiest to read? 
we have one up the top that's like a nice fancy script. And then we have some other fonts that are maybe a little bit hard to read, some that are pretty basic. Someone might think that's kind of boring, but really when it comes down to it, you need to be able to read the poster. And that is the most important thing. So if you're using some sort of a unique font, like one of the, like the fourth one listed down, maybe you want to use that for a word in the heading or something like that. You would just really want to limit the use of those kind of fonts and just stick to a good basic font so that everyone can read it easily. Talking about the letter style, use a letter style that's easy to read. Again, looking, these are just samples. And while some of these may be okay for headings, uh, you would not want to have all of your text printed in some of those fonts because it'd be really difficult to read a lot of content if it's written in some like script or fancy font. Text size is really important. And when you think about these kind of project displays, when they're going to their project judging, their judge is probably just gonna be sitting right next to them at the table. But then when those uh, displays are exhibited at your county fair or something like that, they need to be able to be read from, you know, about 10 feet. Large one inch text is great if you can do that, if you have the space to do it. Three quarters of an inch text is easy to read. If it's about a half an inch, it's fairly easy to read. But once you get, you know, down much smaller than that, quarter inch, three sixteenths of an inch, just really cannot be read when it gets down that small. So you want to make sure that you're using text that you can see from a distance. The colors of our posters are really important because if you use a color that there is not enough contrast between the background and the lettering, you just can't see it very well. And you can see that from the examples here with the dark lettering on a, on a light background works great. But if you have light lettering on a light background, it doesn't work at all. Or if you have a dark background with dark lettering, with black lettering, like the, the dark blue with the black lettering, you can't hardly see what those words even say. And they all say the same thing. So for best visibility, we need to have contrasting colors. So this is an example of how a handwritten poster can be a good poster. Um, but, and this was a poster that my daughter, she was older in this picture, but when she made this poster, I don't know, she was probably about 12 years old. And looking back at, she said, if she were to redo it, she would make the icons a lot more bold and brighter so that they would stand out. But really, when you look at it, it's a well done poster for something that is handwritten. And so there's no reason that, you know, some kids don't have access to a computer or a printer to be able to, be, to print things for their posters. So it's fine that they can do that by hand. One way that I like to advise uh, kids, if you're trying to make a poster by hand, you can buy that poster board that has the ghost line on it and, and use that as a guide. Or one thing that I always like to use was just a ruler or a yardstick and lay that flush with the edge and just right on top of that rule. So if this was a ruler here and you would just make your letters down and just stop at the at the ruler and that gives you a nice sharp straight line as well. When you're making your poster or display, you wanna encourage kids not to rush. Take your time, make sure you spell everything correctly. I talked about using a ruler or a yardstick to keep things aligned and neat neatness does count. <laughs> you wanna tell kids, um, depending if they're right-handed or left-handed, but really to watch you know, where they're laying their arm when they're working on their poster so they're not smudging up the work that they've already done. And then also, if you want, you can neatly label your poster, either on the lower front corner or on the back to put your name, age club, all of that information. Some other tips I have for you are to print or write on cardstock paper rather than just using regular uh, printing paper, use cardstock because then that paper is heavier and you can mount it. And if you use, what, regardless of what you're using to mount it, maybe you're using rubber cement or maybe you're use, using glue or double stick tape, it doesn't show through and it looks a lot better and nice and neat. So using that cardstock is great. Mm -hmm. I like to use rubber cement to mount things because regular glue sometimes can still, 
it just gets kind of soppy and wet. And so I, it just doesn't give the look that I like to use. So I like to, to use uh, rubber cement. Spray adhesive is nice and easy, but then I have found in the hot summer, out in the heat and humidity, it tends to just fall off. And so I don't really recommend the spray adhesive. And like I said before, it's, it's great to mount your text and photos on a contrasting color to make it really pop off the off the display board. And now you can buy a poster display board in all different types of colors. So you can think about that. Maybe you have a colored display background and then you use a contrasting color to have a background for your text and then have a jump off of that. It would look really fantastic. And you want to try to keep your, your posters nice. After you've gone into all this effort to make a poster, it's great to have a way to transport them. And I will tell you, the one down in the lower right, that's actually like a professional portfolio carrier. It's big. It will hold the big poster boards. Um, and that one, I believe it cost me about $60 on Amazon, but it was one of the best investments I ever made as a club advisor. Or maybe it's something that your club could invest in for you to use to collect posters, and to keep, to take to the fair. One thing that I always did on Project Judging Day when I was a club advisor I would tell the kids when they were done with their judging to bring me their posters and their displays that needed to go in our booth at the fair. That way I would have all of those posters. They didn't have to remember to bring their poster when they're worried about loading up their pigs or whatever I'm bringing to the fair. I already had those and those were neat and they were all in one place. So that's a great thing. But here's some examples of one, the, the plastic uh, poster bulletin board carrier I got was about $25, I believe. I got that at a teacher supply store. I used that a lot. One of my kids made a homemade poster carrier from foam board and duct tape. And she used that when she was traveling to something and needed to take a poster with her. So it's a great way to keep your posters nice and be able to transport them or to save them. I actually had two of these, one that I kept old posters in and then I that we kept at home and I kept a supply of poster board in it and then the second one I used that well that we took when we were taking posters someplace so you really want to represent yourself and your club well that's what your poster is doing so you want it to be a good representation of yourself and your project it will be displayed you know throughout fair week and many of your family and friends will see it. So you want it to look great. And so do your best to make your poster educational. You want it to be visually appealing so that people can, can take a look at that and, and learn something from your poster. And also remember that you made a fantastic project. And so hopefully these tips have helped you. If anyone has any questions, I would be happy to address those. I'd like to thank you for, for participating and this is to be recorded. So for those who are watching this as a recording, if they want to get credit for watching it, those of you who are on live with us, we have your names uh, recorded. But if you're watching this as a, as a recording on YouTube, you can go to that link to do a short quiz to get credit for your volunteer training. Thanks for joining us today. Mm -hmm.